Because they have a product they sell, they can put that in. Set up six inches. as we've been studying these over the past, you know, decade or so. Um, and we call it our treatment train. It's a bunch of stormwater control measures in series. So we take a quarter of this parking lot is the drainage area. So 100% impervious. Again, it's a faculty parking lot. So there's parking year round. Um, on the other side of the parking lot, you'll see a infiltration trench that we built in, I believe it was 2004. Um, that drainage area to infiltration trench area is something on the order of 130 to 1. And all, of course, manuals recommend, you know, somewhere between 3 to 1 to 5 to 1 ratio. So we completely blew that ratio out of the water. And it was to overload the system so we could see how quickly one of these systems would silt up the infiltration trench. And it silted up very quickly, as you might imagine. Um, I think we said that it's about a hundred years old at this point, even though it's only in actuality about eight years old um, in terms of the silt or the sediment load that it has been seeing. So we were like, well, if we put some sort of pre-treatment ahead of it, it might be a good job, a good idea. So that was sort of where this idea came from. And then we wanted to ask ourselves a few other questions, kind of thinking of how fast we can or how much we can reduce um, nutrients or suspended sediment loads as we move through the system. Do we kind of reach a minimum amount of treatment we can get or do we keep approaching um, zero? Basically how does our treatment keep changing if we add more and more to the system? And also to see is it linear, is it exponential, is it logarithmic, what kind of treatment are we getting as we move through? So the water comes from a quarter of this parking lot again relatively dirty water um, through a series of pipes and then this is a vegetated swale and it's about 100 feet long. Um, we built this last fall. We started one planting last fall and we finished up with another planting uh, this spring. Halfway through, so right here you might be able to see it, there's a v-notch weir and we have a pressure transducer there. So we measure the flow right as it comes in we measure here, we measure before it goes into the first rain garden, before it goes into the second rain garden, and then an infiltration trench, and we'll walk our way down. So we have a vegetated swale that goes into a rain garden, and then a second rain garden. We decided to put the two rain gardens in series, as opposed to in parallel, to see if you don't have the space to make one big rain garden, what if you make two little rain gardens? Again, do you see water quality improvement as you go from one to the next? Again, thinking kind of, we think of this as very much applicable to the urban area. Um, we have it, you know, kind of curving around more for artistic pleasure than anything else, um, but this could really easily work along a streetscape, right? So you have a very linear um, system, which is the swale, and actually the way our rain gardens are designed, they're elliptical in shape, so again, following that linear um, pathway. So this could, again, be very good for the urban area. Um, We've been struggling, Kara. I don't know where she is. She's back here. Oh, there, Kara is a grad student that has been working on this very, very hard. Um, we've been having a lot of issues with just trying to get the sensitivity that we need for our flow measurements. So we know it's working. We can see that it's working. Um, we just can't quantify it quite yet. The system is designed so to store one one inch of runoff over that watershed, about 0.3 inches should be treated within the vegetated swale, 0.7 in the two rain gardens, and then the final 0.3 in the infiltration trench. So what that means is the infiltration trench is really only going to see overflow when we have over 0.7 inches of rain, which brings us down to probably around, what, 60, 65% of events yeah. are over or are less than 0.7 inches. So instead of the infiltration trench, getting hit every single time, it's only getting water about 35% of the annual events per year. So longevity should be a lot longer. The infiltration trench, it's underground. It's a lot harder to maintain than these surface sites. If something happens here, if this gets clogged, we can go in, scoop it out, and 
maintain it relatively easily compared to the infiltration trench. So again, this idea of how can we build in maintenance um, and smart maintenance into the design of these systems. Is just the swale and the rain gardens that we're looking at? This or? is just the swale and the rain gardens are down a little bit further. Oh, okay. So we'll kind of walk our way down that way to see. Any questions right now?